You know, I remember enjoying the first movie, but I had to go back and watch my review of it because I didn't really remember the movie all that well, and man, have I aged in five years. Hey everybody, what's going on? Today we're going to be talking about the sequel to 2017's The Hitman's Bodyguard, a movie that I actually really enjoyed. Today we're going to be talking about The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Uh, okay, I warn you, there's going to be spoilers in this because I do have to talk about uh, the predictability of this movie. I also have to talk about uh, the big time missed opportunity uh, that this one had. That being said... If they do make another one, they still have a chance to make up for it. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. That's probably the last thing I'll mention in this review. And if you're wondering about my intro there, I just have to say, long story short, this movie is just so much more of the same that I didn't have anything really interesting to to make up for my intro. Uh, so, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to be spoiling this movie. That being said, the movie spoils itself because, man, is it predictable. Uh, what you have with this movie is um, Michael Bryce, uh, Ryan Reynolds' character, he uh, is on a downward skid because he can't get his license back and, and he's seeing a therapist, but the therapist is tired of listening to him. Uh, so she's like, you, you graduate therapy, go on a sabbatical, no more guns, no more bodyguarding. Uh, so he's on vacation, and uh, he gets, let's just say, approached by uh, Sonya Kincaid, which is, of course, uh, Salma Hayek. We, we met her in the first movie. Uh, of course, she's married to Darius Kincaid, which is Samuel L. Jackson's character. Um, and she needs his help. Uh, Darius has been kidnapped. Um, what they go into, the rescue... Uh, leads to screwing up an Interpol uh, sting that they're setting up. So then they want, uh, they end up wanting the trio to help them with their case because they screwed up uh, the case they were building. Um, the villain of this movie is uh, Antonio Banderas. He plays uh, this Greek guy. I mean, that's really. Really, that is his character. He's the evil Greek guy. Um, he uh, is trying to uh, disrupt, um, basically, the way... He, he is, he's tired of Greece getting screwed by uh, England. So, he's he's using this technology that's going to, like, screw up all their technology. It, it's just kind of, it's kind of a throwaway plot, to be honest. Um, so it ends up being our trio has to stop him in the end. Um, look, if you like the first movie, you, you get some enjoyment out of this. That being said, it, it, it's too much more of the same. Sometimes in a sequel, you can get more of the same and it's fine. And in this one, there's some things that did work, but... It's the stuff that they tried to do to be a little crazier that didn't work for me. A, because you see it coming a mile away. And B, it's just not that interesting. See, they have this whole thing where uh, Sonya Kincaid is telling Michael Bryce that she, she knows what's wrong with him. She knows why he's having issues. He's got daddy issues. And he's got parental issues, and it's okay if if uh, he looks at her as as a mommy figure, and cause, and of course with Salma Hayek, they have to pay you know put attention to her assets, and she's like I I've seen you looking at my boobs all the time, and it, it, it's it's just dumb, and the, also we have this whole story of. Uh, Darius and Sonya trying to have a kid, um, and he's keeping secrets. Uh, she ends up at time thinking he's having an affair, ends up thinking that he's trying, he's saying she's barren and can't have kids, so he's trying to buy eggs for her, 
But really, he's seeing a fertility expert because he really wants to have kids with her. But as he, as she kept bringing up, I mean, you could see this motherly feel to Michael and Sonia's relationship right away. And you're just like, I'm, I'm the whole time just like, they're going to adopt him, aren't they? I, I was like, I, I know that's where this movie's going to go. And it, it, being that it's this movie, that's not a crazy thought. And again, I said I was going to spoil the movie. They adopt him in the end. It's stupid. Um, when it comes to the action, uh, it's the same. Uh, the movie relied, the first movie relied a lot on shaky type cam. This one did too. Uh, it's brutal and bloody, just the same. A lot of funny violence. I mean, it, it, it is a lot of the same. Were there some good moments in this movie in the action and the comedy? Sure, of course there was. Um, but I don't know. It just felt, I don't know. I, I was bored a lot of the times in this movie, maybe because it wasn't as funny. I remember thinking the first one was a lot more funny than this one. Um, but this one just wasn't as funny to me. Uh, and I mean, but then again, you see everything coming a mile away. Uh, Bryce has this whole thing where he's, he's not using guns and all that. And it's like, gee, I wonder if he's going to, you know, quote unquote, man up at the end and start using guns. Yes. Uh, just everything, you know, where it's going to go. And just granted, at least this wasn't a very long movie. It's only like a little over an hour and a half. So, uh, it, it's not that it, it's like a two and a half hour slog, but it just, I don't know. I just was not as entertained this time around. Maybe, maybe I'm just getting older. I don't know, but, but I no, you know what? I don't, it's, it, I don't think it's me. I really don't. I really think that they thought they had uh, some good ideas for some comedy here. Uh, and it didn't work. Um, you had a generic bad guy. Again, I like the heroes, uh, Elodie Young didn't return for this one, unfortunately, because I remember really liking her in the first one. Um, but, uh, here's one thing. I mean, all predictability and everything aside, they, there was, there was an after credit scene. There's a mid credit scene and after credit scene, mid credit scene, predictable, silly, fine. The end credit scene, uh, it, it's nothing really worth sticking around for, but it was kind of funny. Earlier in the movie, uh, Ryan Reynolds needs two decoys, uh, and they do a tribute to the decoys, uh, at the end of the credits. And that was kind of funny, uh, even though it's just like a screen with their pictures, you know, in memory of kind of thing. But here's, here's the thing that really got me in. And you know what? Maybe they tried to get this person in the movie. Um, but, uh. And they couldn't. I don't know. I haven't been able to find anything on this. But uh, you have... See, we, we meet Michael Bryce's dad. And instantly, your mind is going to a certain actor. And I'm thinking, man, is it going to be? Because that's funny. If they can really pull this off, that's funny. Um, but it turns out, his dad... The identity of his dad leads to a race joke. Because... Morgan Freeman walks out, which, okay, cool. You got Morgan Freeman in the movie, and he's playing uh, Bryce's dad. And, of course, you got Samuel Jackson going, what? Uh, uh, what? How can't? You know, he's just the whole time. It, the joke drags on way too long. He's like, I got so many questions. Um, but then it turns out that uh, Morgan Freeman is a stepdad. So, I have hopes that if they do make another one, which, by the way, I, I guess this one is not doing so hot. Even though it came out on Wednesday, I didn't get to see it till uh, till Friday night, and I heard it's not doing very well. Um, granted, it's probably going to make some money because people want something to watch, and they like the people in it. Uh, but if they do make another one, you could introduce Bryce's real father, and it's got to be Kevin Costner. It does. I mean, the advertising for the the first movie alone stole so much from the bodyguard. I'm not saying he's got to be the, the character, but you got to have it be Kevin Costner. When they, they showed the character in the shadows 
when they were going to introduce his dad, I was like, oh, tell me that's Kevin Costner because it's perfect. It would be perfect. And they didn't. It was Morgan Freeman, which again, I love Morgan Freeman, but, and then they're like, oh, it's a stepdad. Okay. So his dad is still out there. Um, so if they don't, if they aren't able to get, uh, Kevin Costner to play his father, uh, if they make another one, then they've missed out. Uh, I, that, that just really disappointed me because it's like, you stole all the marketing from the bodyguard. You can't, can't not have Kevin Costner if you make another one and it has to be his father. But anyway, uh, look, long story short, I I didn't like this one as much as the first one. Um, it's still fine. I got some entertainment out of it. Uh, but I would probably call this one a rental. Um, if you need something to go out and watch, well, it's there. It, it's got some okay laughs. The plot's boring. The The twists are predictable. Um, it's not as... F- I don't think it was as funny uh, as the first one. I, it wasn't as witty. Uh, a lot of the jokes for me in this one, there were some good ones, but a lot of them fell flat. But yeah, I just didn't like this one as much. I, and it really disappointed me because... After seeing that first one, I, I would have spent, and I was happy to spend another movie with these characters. And, and now they just kind of, I don't know, they kind of let me down this time. I was a little bit disappointed. But anyway, that's it for this review. See you later.